Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the second game of the night of NA. And, well, the, if we can find the first team heading to the lower semifinals. We're one map in. Consulate went to a 7-5 and a pretty back and forth between Luminosity and Rise. But, hey, we've still got two maps left, and the next one being Rise's. Yeah, let's have a look how it's going to go down as we go into Villa. Kind of an interesting map pick coming out from Rise, given the fact that this was a clean sweep coming out from Luminosity Gaming when they went against their opponents of Disrupt earlier. Yeah, the the breakdown of it and the thinking here is like, okay, Rise, show us why you've done this. Because every stat and every favor will point towards it being a very good Luminosity map. They've proven themselves on it. They're a very capable team. And you're assuming at this point, you're going in on this on the second map, so they're going to have the first map up. You assume. Like, you're obviously going to make it a fight as they did. So what we're hoping to see here, and what I'm assuming Rise have done, is a heck of a lot of counter stratting. They've well, well, also, during the Challenger League season, this has been one of Rise's best maps as well. Yeah. So it's it's not unfamiliar for them to want to go here, but also, I think there's also an element of Luminosity probably aren't going to change up too much from what they did last time here on Villa. So we'll have a look into that, and we'll see exactly how it's going to go down. As Rise Nation, thinking long and hard about their second ban, I'm going to guess it could be a mirror. We've seen some decent mirror shots come out from Luminosity. No, it's going to be an Echo. Ooh. Ooh. This leaves an opportunity for Luminosity now. I don't think they're going to take the opportunity, because Mirror does make this a bit of a hell in a cell. I think they are going to remove Mirror, but there is an opportunity for, to leave it up. No, they are going to remove it, so... No one ever does it, man. No one ever goes for something interesting. <sighs> there is right. a land spot on the line, to be fair. Probably yeah. not the best to start. And obviously, whoever wins uh, this play day, or whoever wins this game, they are up against either EG or Obey. And those are two tough teams to go up against. So there's still one more step between them and finding their way out here to split in the beginning of December. So maybe no, maybe no risk of the rolls just yet. So they save those for around then, and they have a little bit more time to think of fresh strategies and counterplays and ways to break down each other. Aviator game, save EG is where we are going to open this with obviously uh, Luminosity opting to defend first. Yeah, don't forget, this is Ryze's map pick, so Luminosity get to pick what side they start on, and they'll start on defense. But of course, that means that Ryze will pick what their OT starting side is, and we're going to guess that they picked defense there as well. We'll see Factor, sick pick from the Valkyrie up onto the dock instead, probably knowing that there is an IQ coming out from England here. As, yeah, as you said, we'll go to EVG as our first defense side. So pretty standard, pretty default coming out so far from Luminosity. Let's have a look at what bombs. they'll want to do here. And uh, in terms of lineup, this is pretty familiar. Um, I've got to say, with the Maestro ban from last game, we didn't get to see the uh, almighty Hyena Maestro, which I'm quite looking forward to. <laughs> is, that, is that what we're going to see now, Hyena? Yeah. The, the weird thing is, so we've seen this a few times. Um, throughout OGA Pit. And one of the big problems that we've often seen is a lot of people, well, they won't bring Maestro, which is sometimes a bit of a, depending on the strategy, you think, well, you know, he would be good here. But that kind of classical corridor often just kind of gets left to miss sometimes. And I'm hoping to see a little bit more control of that, if I'm honest. Well, we'll have a look what they want to do, but I'm going to guess that Hyena is going to be probably, probably wants to play up onto 90 and see what he does. We're seeing a lot more teams do this kind of strategy where they play a lot more spread out across the master side and yeah. across that classical area, as you were saying. And uh, well, we'll have a look what they want to do there and we'll have a look what is going to be the plan. But from Rise, it looks like a master side take. Well, Adam already trying to put some damage towards the master side and seeing if they can find the bodies that are inside. But no peaks, no aggression just yet. The swing against the door frame does I might scare someone, but unfortunately Halloween's long gone now uh, and they can't quite find the bodies to make it match. As they double down and try and just get a bit of get a bit of clarity with how they want to lock off this. This is generally a flat take map. You get a bit of roam control up on the stairs, whether a Claymore or Nomad or whatever operator you seem fit. They've also got the gridlock short, which will give a lot of information. And then you try and push your way across, especially when they do this spread out, because yes, you can kind of dig your way in, but if you don't give yourself a little bit more space and a little bit more mobility on the top floor, well, the ability for Romas to swing back round and do things like this is just off oh. the charts. Adam takes care of Factor, does a quick 360, but unfortunately can't follow it up with the second as Rex and doubles down Habana. 
gets Where well, you get saved as Vandal covers and drops Rexon, but with the wall open and Re Vandal just yeah. inside at this point, there needs to be a response from Luminosity. Hyena is going to start to gear that response into their favor. And smokes are going to go out, and then Nitro goes out as well from Thomas's doodles. Smoke will catch the back of Vandal. Thomas shuts down England as well, and it's all down to Acid and Beastly to try and bring this in right now. This is not looking too good for Ryus. Their early plant was not a success. They weren't able to burn any of that utility so far. They're going to do the somewhere behind the bar, though. That should open up maybe a potential opening frag here for Acid. As he does start to move into the site. BC, of course, looking through his own kill holes as well. That he's made for himself. Well, with 50 seconds on the board, the pair have a lot that they can do. I believe all the charges at this point for Habana have been utilized, and that is going to give instant information that Maestro Cam is just going to say, well, here's Gridlock. She's coming, and they're going to try and track and add some control. Quick fires round, but Thomas finds Beastly, and... Oh, what a shot wow. from Thomas. Yeah, drops the pair as Acid suffers as well. Great hold and a great response to what was a well, pretty powerful opening from the side of Rise, but Luminosity dig in, and probably might not be taken by such an amount of surprise as Ryze tried that time. Yeah, it, it was kind of weird because the start of that round was not looking good for Luminosity. They started some very aggressive plays up onto that study area. Rexon going for some kind of sprinting maneuver, but was shut down quite easily. And Ryze seemed pretty happy not to get too much open and just go straight for that plant. But the problem is with doing that so early is there was no utility off the board whatsoever. You still had Hyenas, of course, holding down that Alder LMG spray to catch you on that back foot as well. So we'll see how it does go down as we go to Trophy Room and Statutory Room, but a solid start for coming out for Luminosity. Yeah, I think the, the main bit I'm curious about in there was what Rexon was trying to pull off with the uh, gung-ho charge. Obviously, he was trying to get the Habana and catch it by surprise, but you assume that when they've put that much bodies in and that much cover and they're already aggressively pushing into the point that they will have the crossfire set up, especially when Adam would have called where he'd been killed from and where the push and where the angle might have been being held because they're going to try and stop you charging in to get the Habana charges, whatever happens. So a little bit of a misplay, but... Hey, they still managed to find the round in and amongst the anchor players either way. Setting themselves up for the other top four point on trophy with, again, this wide hold with Rex and Factor hard reinforcing off quad wall and allowing themselves the ability to play inside AVG and the ability to then fall back. Because when you do have that covered, as we said before, you know, the attackers have to get some control on it. They have to find a body or two and they have to at least have an angle set up and... If the Romers can keep themselves hot and active on this map, well, it becomes an absolute nightmare later on. And no one wants that. Attackers objective is to locate a bomb. We'll head into round number two, and we'll see exactly how it's going to be playing out here for Luminosity. As Factor, back on his old Vigil. There's, uh, there's one element of the Vigil as well that I think a lot of people miss, is that when you use your Vigil ability, you're going to be able to see if there's any drones nearby next to you, but it's going to be Factor again on that Vigil, as we just talked about, instantly just pick up the IQ. Wow, that was a very quick loss. I'm assuming it was a jump out from around Mud Window and just kind of swung his way towards where they were charging. And you know, this is the kind of aggression that I guess in the previous round didn't quite work in the favor of Luminosity, but on this map, if you lean into the space and lean into what you can do with it, you can really put off the attackers and just kind of define these rounds as your own. They're steadily making their way closer and closer and opening up as many windows and angles of control as they can, but Factor is going to try another one as Thomas gets acid in the meantime, and there from behind, Whoa. Factor gets his double and is free to do whatever he wants to do. This is looking absolutely awful for Ryze right now as they move into a 5v2 all down to Beastly and Vandal to try and bring it in once more. Let's see if they can do it correctly this time. Still a flashbang up on the table for Beastly here, but other than that, not a huge amount of utility available for either player as Ryze struggle to find their entry right now. It's looking there, trying to find another vector to move through instead as Beastly makes his way up onto the pantry stairs and into kitchen to maybe potentially push up Astro, but just about halfway into the round, Ryze do have plenty of time to deal with here. Not a lot of utility, and of course, they're at a three-man disadvantage. Kind of curious what happened to the EMPs next Kairos for them to not really be able to get any hold on 
that master bedroom side. It's really, really funneling their push. And, you know, this is not a great way to kind of meet the end of your maker. The barbed wire and the default cam is going to give all the information in the world as soon as that potentially lights on. They know you're going to be pushing this side anyway, so he takes it off before he has to, and they're going to pre-fire through a usual hold. And they're so concerned about someone looping around the back, which is a fair fear with your this many men down. And here's from the back and the side of the stairs. Factor, unstoppable that round. Yeah, 3k from Factor on the round. He's absolutely monstrous on that vigil today as he shuts down everyone from Rise. Gets up a 3k for himself and turns it into a flawless round for Luminosity there. Dying very, very strong here on Villa. What is happening with Rise? This is supposed to be one of their best maps. Yeah, I, I you know, this is one of the things that we kind of talked about was because as well as like, obviously, we can say it's a very good map for them, but they're coming in it so hot from the last time that they kind of played it and smashed through it. Not Rise, Luminosity, obviously, yeah. because they 7 owed it before. And when, when you're that confident on a map, that can transcend the next time you play the map. You can go, well, we're hitting a 7 0. We're one map up. We have this freedom to be aggressive. We're on a map that we know responds well to that. If you do want to just charge around and jump out and do stuff below, do it. Because there's still so much left that they've got to do upstairs. And if Rise find themselves being shut down by these kind of plays and these kind of movements of momentum, you know, it's it's going to swing heavily against them, unfortunately. In the first round, they were aggressive and it worked quite well. They were able to like find their way in against the point and obviously Thatcher was in there before than I think a lot of people expected. And then it was a great, it had to be a great return from Luminosity to swing it back in their favor, but that round was just nothing. They, they weren't any pressure against the point itself. It, it was kind of beaming confidence, especially with that opening kill going to the favor of Factor. Let's have a look at how this is going to be playing out as we're now onto our offsite. This is what Ryze need to win to keep themselves in the game. To be fair, we've not seen Ryze on defense yet. And, no. you know, as long as they're able to keep in the running here with two attack wins, they're definitely not out of it. If they can bring this to OT, I think they can definitely win as well because they do get defense first in OT. It's the thing about this map as well. You've always got to remember that it is defender sided, sure, but when the defenders are that free as they were in the previous round, if you don't find a way to curb that, well, it's not going to bode well for how this continues. Oh, yeah. In the meantime, Adam already suffering a fair chunk of damage. Yeah, someone who's been a top entry fragger during Consula has really been struggling to put themselves on the board today on Villa. It's not looking good so far at all. Thomas has managed to find himself a mozzie drone, however, He's going to be able to drone that all out and see what kind of info he can get out of that. You can get so much info and so much retake ability coming out from a mozzie drone. We're happy to see that. Factor's moved on to Jaeger, however. He's still contesting top red. Well, the pressure comes against the windows as they try and find a little bit more give against this point. Otherwise, they try to shut down the floor, but oh. Hyena just cuts Adam in half from range. They knew this was oh. happening, and they sacrifice another one to Hyena. Thomas finds a third, and it's suddenly a five versus two. Now it's a good night. It's coming out as well from Luminosity across the board, and this is looking horrific for Ryze right now. Asi going to move in. He does see the gun of Rexon, and will take him down. Brings it into a 4v2. There's still a lot of work to do here, but Ryze still looking very, very good to try and bring this in as they start to put kills on the board. Hyena and Rexon both off the board now as well, as we'll see Ryze start to move into the site. Acid finds one of his own. We'll see the Pantry Stairs push does come through as well from Beastly there. He should be able to get control of the site and start to go for a plant. As smokes are going to go down, but Doodle finds Beastly. It's all down to Acid, but the Maestro Cam is there. It's going to see him through the smoke as he tries to go for another one, but no, this is looking awful right now. They're going to know exactly where Acid is. He tries to go for the plant, but all these track stingers are stopping any kind of movement coming out from Luminosity. The plant goes down successfully from Acid, and it's going to have to be a two-on-one retake coming out right now. But no, almost completely thrown away. Doodle goes down. It's all down to Thomas to try and bring this in. He knows that he's behind the wet shot from Thomas as he takes down Acid, and that should be an easy round for him. Gets the defuse down, but it was a very, very good attempt from what was... I guess a dire situation, and they found the aggression against the kitchen and were able to get some bodies back in their favor, get the plant down, and to say that that round came down to an almost in terms of the health and the status of Luminosity for how that round opened, you've got to give a bit of credit to how Ryze pulled some of that back. 
yeah, Rai is definitely putting a lot of frags up on the board, but look at that. Thomas is going to be pushing all the way through and seeing what exactly he can do. He's 6-0 right now, and he definitely deserved the good night coming out from his part. We'll see Render before getting underway, but Luminosity looking absolutely dominant throughout this right now. We've seen the Clash pick coming out from Rexon. Yeah, I guess we'll see if they stick that. You've seen... <sighs> Nope, nope, there's the sixth pick off. And it's a bait and play for, I guess, two different levels of aggression. You've seen a fair bit of Clash on this point, to be fair. She's occasionally bought to, like, hold either the, you know, the close immediate door where we saw the pressure come from before and where the Thatcher just balled in uh, yeah, the last time we were here. Or you can occasionally put her on the kind of, you know, 90 in the classical corridor and peel her back. And when you learn where the push is coming from, just be a little bit more aggressive and shut down the pace that Ryze might want to have because as we said that's when they've lit up a bit and that's when they've been better and uh you know and you kind of want to see more of that really more of that kind of early aggression as well yeah, coming yeah. out so well <sighs> it's a tough one for Ryze they're definitely going to need still two rounds on the board if they want to make it in these core sites attacks have been absolutely dreadful from then they've not been able to get a lot of kills on the board either Five Aviator was probably the closest they got to actually getting a plant down, but yeah, this has not looked good at all for Rise. They've been absolutely dominated on this site. We'll see how things continue to go down, but I'm not confident that Rise is looking good on this map right now. Well, 3-0. There's the semblance of being able to pull back one or two rounds, and if they can find one or two at the turn of the half, maybe they can bring themselves back into more of a firefight. In the meantime, it's you know, it's back to the rotation of points. They know they'll be going up against Aviator at this point, and they've got to see if they can find a way to make it work in their favor. Rexon being as wild as he was previously, with Factor taken a little bit further along, and they've not doubled up over each other's shoulders this time, but they're still, again, ready to be very aggressive. And Factor looks like he's just going to charge straight in for a second there, and he seems like he wants to. Sees the window open, is waiting for someone to enter via the bathroom. Here comes the IQ on the hop-in. They're going to... Oh my god, Factor just eliminates England and he goes down like a sack of potatoes. That is absolutely horrific to watch as there goes Adam as well. Nice kill coming up from Factor yet again as Adam did pick himself back up but just gets just right back down. This is looking so good for Factor. He's just dominating performance right now. Yeah, amazing kind of push there and was able to, as I said, he was creeping and he was aggressive and he wanted to swing round and yes, they tried the prone peak, but unfortunately it was just <laughs> completely read into, even with the drones in the room as well. They had the possibility to get that information, but they just can't make it work. And Rexon with the free place to see four, catches no fish as Acid tries to close down the back stairs and try and get something on terms of a little bit of a solid hold here. Yet again, Thatch is in a bit of a tight spot as he was previously. And and, well, doubled up with a Habana, but so far the pair haven't been able to find anything to use. And Habana finds nothing as she gets dropped. Vandal and Acid find one apiece, but there's another drop on the entrance of the doorway. And it's a one versus three. You've got to get through a smoke. You've got to get through a Valk and a Maestro. What can you do with a minute, Gridlock? So got plenty of utility up on the board, however, from Acid. And he's got plenty of time to deal with this. Does find one to doodle. He's now in a 1v2, but as you said, he's got to work through this Maestro, he's got to work through this Valkyrie, and a huge amount of utility still available on the site. Regardless of that, Acid is going to start to push through, see what he can do on Aviator, putting Track Stingers down in the smoke, making sure that no one can pull his 2v2 gay on him as he pushes all the way through, but just at the edge of the smoke, Rexon will take him down, Luminosity will take round number four, their fourth consecutive round on Villa. Yeah, looking very, very good on these defenses. And the thing is, okay, I say that. Uh, what I'm going to add to that is when things start to go wrong, it's normally by sometimes their own fault. Um, obviously, you can still keep that aggression up. When you look at how the smoke died, he was holding the A angle pretty wide there in terms of where he could. I think he still had all of his utility left. I hadn't heard any pop off during the round so far. And you're thinking, well, why was he trying to aggressively take the door? If he could have just pulled back a little bit, waited for the audio and waited for the sound, waited for the smokes, because you are maybe the best counter to that. You know, it's those kind of little moments where that's where we're seeing Rise pull back some bodies and pull back some points and pull back some scores. But, you know, they're in a 4-0. We're heading back to Trophy. They have the possibility of putting themselves in a little bit of a burst here. If they could get two rounds, it's good at this point. They get the shift of momentum and they get themselves in. If they take one round, 
it's still okay. If they don't take any, I'm having a tough time seeing them take anything overall. Well, it's going to be a trophy and statutory room defense coming out here so far. Rise bringing the Blackbird for the first time in this series. I'm not sure how I really feel about Blackbird here. I suppose it could be good in a way if they do open up that long angle. They do manage to get their way through onto that kind of master bedroom balcony. Last time, there was absolutely zero progress made by Rice here. They went for this kind of really deep room clear. England got taken off the board immediately as an IQ, and Factor was just rolling all over everyone. Factor's moved through onto the pulse this time. We see Doodle move onto the Elp. So, some interesting uh, interesting changes to Luminosity's defense here. Definitely like a pulse being added to this lineup, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it is obviously when you look at the Blackbeard, they're trying to get a little bit more control of the windows that have otherwise, I guess they they want to in a way make Luminosity pay for being able to wide swing and wide peak and saying, well, if you hit me now, I'm going to be able to at least drop you and get that first trade, which has otherwise eluded them on every single round, uh, apart from the very first one. And, and now it's just a matter of obviously they want they want to make Luminosity suffer for being so aggressive and so kind of over it and whether it works or not i guess we're gonna see because in the meantime luminosity have been so fluid across this map they're happy to swing to the pulse and get the information from below they're happy to kind of keep their their space and the like kind of heat map around beneath alive and there's thomas opening it up and he takes care of adam that's gonna be another good night coming out from thomas as well adam gonna go down early on as rexon finds one of his own as gonna be going down so early and this is looking already all luminosity yet again the black are gonna move in from below but loses the fight to a ump oh, come on england gonna go down so early on hyena goes for the wide swing is all gonna be down to vandal but no can't bring it in and another flawless round for luminosity it's looking all blue right now Vivo, you have one more round to find something on these attacks because confidence is at an all-time high in the Luminosity camp right now, and it's not looking great. England, unfortunately, still unable to find any bodies throughout this so far, and the amount of good nights is increasing <laughs> as we get further and further into this, and you've got to give credit to Luminosity. What they're doing and how they're doing it is paying in dividends right now well it's going to be a dining room and kitchen defense once again this was the closest we've seen rise to actually taking a round came down to that 1v1 but unfortunately as just could not make it work let's see how it does go down as we move into round number six and if rise can finally put themselves on the board here but don't forget they are going to move on the defense i have seen a 6-0 6-0 defense wins on villa before it's not that uncommon, honestly. This is very defender side of the map. We almost saw that in the G2 versus Orgles matchup, actually, as well. Yeah. And I think that's the thing about it is, you know, you always kind of reference what maps are sided towards one or the other, and this is a defender sided map. There's no real two ways about that. However, it's more the momentum that they're carrying in the rounds yeah. that are the things that are going to, like, show the dominance. Yeah, these have not been close rounds whatsoever. We've had two flawless rounds already from Luminosity. They've been absolutely dominant throughout this map. Last map was very, very back and forth. This time, LG, they're not messing around at all. Luminosity are here to take the win and secure their place in the semi-finals. Let's see if they can do it. They've got a couple more rounds to win before they can get there. Rise desperately need a win to swing Five back this momentum. Remains. They need at least one win on this attack if they can even hope to bring this in. Maestro is going to set himself up to try and do some of the heroics that he was doing on this top floor previously. They've softed up the door to not allow an immediate entrance, and Factor oh. is just going to randomly start spraying and get dropped. Beastly is a little bit taken aback from that, and Adam drops Rexon as well. So now it's two quick kills, and again, they're punishing the aggression, but Thomas finds one and looks for the second with the diffuser down cold. However, he's done a little bit of work and can feed that back to the rest of the team. There's Doodle bringing it back to a 3-3 very quickly, dropping it in on a semblance, and, well, there's the third good night, and the chat is only going downhill from here. Yeah, that is actually, as well, the Habana off the board. That is a massive pick from here from Lunosti. Nice C4 comes out from Thomas, but doesn't manage to quite connect with his target. Onto Pantry Stairs, 
I wonder if he knows that Adam is indeed here. He's going to peek him out. What a shot from Thomas, but also a complete bait on to Adam. Does catch him out. It's going to be a 3v2. Not looking good for Ryze at all. Vanel moves in. He does find the refrag. Acid finds one of his own. It's all down to Hyena. He finds one right from the top ropes. And it's all going to be down to him. But no, the refrag does come through. And Ryze Nation will finally find their very first round. Well, they said they did it because they were trolling. I guess now it's up to Rise to make them eat their words and regret that round. They are on the defense. They're in a 5-1, as you said. It's tough, but it's if there was a map where this happens, this is the map. This is the this is the stage. It's set to do a comeback and make them eat those words and all those good nights and make them suffer for their sins. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, though, because... Hey, if they pull themselves together, well, they can already find some of the rounds that they've done. Starting in AVG, as expected, we've got a lot of options and a lot of big guns here on the board for the defenders to try and find some aggression that they were otherwise suffering at the bitter end of previously. At the same time, Nomad is on the board for the first time today. Well, first time this map today. She's been on the board a whole lot today. Yes. Not used Attackers a lot that well. Something we haven't <laughs> seen on this map, though, is Thermite. We haven't seen any Thermite yet, and Luminosity are not one to do that as well. I, I think I kind of understand this as well, like, Rise tend to be pretty good at impact tricking in the past when they played this, although they haven't, uh, maybe Maestro's brought impacts here, but it doesn't look like they brought too many impacts themselves. But it's generally very, very easy to impact trick on this map on the Thermite charges, so yeah. we'll see Habana's come through there, making sure they can't do that at all. Although, Rise aren't opening up the floors here, so I guess they're not expecting a thermite at all. So like, what I mean is in study, the walls normally, sorry, the floors normally get opened up, so you can't put a thermite charge on the floor, and you can't just circumvent the whole bandit charge just going through there, but it'll explode and removes the very bottom of that study wall. So, it seems like Rise just aren't expecting Luminosity to be bringing a thermite here at all, and, why, and really, why would they? They're going for a very quick clear underneath here, Factor and Rex, and they are, you know, two players that have been continually just sprinting around this villa, and I guess they're not going to stop quite yet. They've completely cleared off the wine side, but, you know, that's third of a very, very, very big map with a lot of rooms and a lot of little hidey holes. They still have a lot of work to do if they want to completely face check clear this entire place. Factor's going to creep up around the back stairs, and... Well, creep up around Astro stairs as well. There's a bit of a drone ahead, but the uh, camera is going to illuminate his position. It seems like Rise aren't doing any real hold inside meeting. Instead, going to put some people up on landing side and try and hold it a little bit closer to home. I guess we'll see if they can... Giving up all this space is something that might bite them in future, or if they can make it work. A lot of control for Luminosity already coming through, and looks like purely kind of 90 side take coming through from them. But we'll see Thomas on the other side trying to do the work on the crossfire, and a kind of just again a hammer and anvil push coming through. We should be very familiar with this by now. But they send four people on one side, one person on the other side as well. We've seen it time and time again. We'll see Habana charges actually might come through onto 90. This could be an interesting strategy where maybe they put the Habana charge down and then push 90 at the same time. This could be interesting. I mean, it seems like that, you know, again, the pace that they're pushing in on this, the fact that they're already knocking on landing door, they're bringing all of the pressure from all the different sides. They have the man hitting 90 as well. They're going to surely get shot off there from the person playing inside. But Factor in the meantime has just crept up in with a minute on the board. They're already setting foot inside the point and all 10 operators are still on the board. Going to try and bounce this round against the Maestro and dig him out of the corner. Going to follow up with an aggressive push, but nobody is quite there. The Maestro is inside the vault. It was actually the Jaeger that was playing there previously, but Jaeger himself has pulled back. There's still the watchful eyes on the close stairs and there's the little wall that's going to get blown open and so is in. England behind it. They have the man advantage. They have all of the space and all of the external control they need. They just have to collapse down upon the point now. They still know there's someone main stairs, however, that is going to be a bit of an issue moving further forward. But Doodle is going to go for the plant. We've got one watching red. Acid does take out Doodle, however, that is the plant denied. Thomas does find the flanker, however, of Beastly, and now turns it into a 2v4 as Rexon finds his entry. It's all down to Acid. And of course, Vandal, but Vandal's actually injured. This is all down to Acid now in a 1v4. This is looking awful right now. Acid is going to have to find a way to deny this plant from going down as he does start to get planted behind the vault door. Impacts are going to come through, but it's not going to be enough as he just gets absolutely deleted. 
And it's going to be all Luminosity as they move themselves onto Merch and Series Point. Wow. Well, well, well. <sighs> the momentum is carried, I think, is the answer to that point. That was a very, very convincing convincing push there they had everything that they wanted it was all handed to them all the land that they could ever desire as they completely careened their way through the map punishment free they had gotten everything under their control and at that point they could use all of their utility to actually collapse upon the point itself they had everything still in their banks Everything to go for and luminosity just absolutely ferocious in that attack as well very 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 quick but also just very coordinated as well. I yeah. really understood how exactly they wanted to do that. You could see the drone info was great from them. And, uh, and yeah, like this, that was just absolutely perfect from Luminosity. I just, I just have no nothing against, I think, Ryze just got absolutely torn apart there. They're going to go back to AVG, however, and see if they can correct some of the mistakes that they did indeed make there. They gave up 90 control very early, but I really just don't think that Luminosity Attack was going to even let them have it for that long anyway. Bomb. I mean, that's the thing about it, is uh, they had two people up on the 90 window. They had all of the landing control that they needed. They had all of the meeting and uh, the bedroom control that they needed. And even if they put one body there or underneath or just around that play space to cause some sort of issue, just to draw some immediate attention away. Because you've got to play into the width of this map. If you don't and you allow a team that is already bringing this much aggressive momentum behind them to just sweep through it as we saw them do. Like when a team is bold enough to generally look like, yeah, they might have pre-placed drones, but there was a lot of quick, you know, face checking down below. They were looking for one-on-one -on -one firefights. And to be fair, they've been winning pretty much all of them throughout the game. But again, you've got to be, you know, in the mindset to, well, let's not give them everything that they want because that's not what's causing them issues right now as a team. Well, it looks like the same setup coming out from Rise right now. We'll have a look what Luminosity want to do, but I have no doubt it's going to be almost the exact same push coming out from them. So successful last time. Why if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But actually, it's looking like more like a study side take coming out from them, so a bit of a reverse sweep. Well, they're going to drone out this middle floor. I think they've kind of quickly realized that Ryze don't really do the deep roam on this side and instead set themselves up with quite a defensive kind of turtle hold. At this point, Rexon is still steadily making their way across and the buck is joining as they try and open up all the soft from underneath. They're doing it to find bodies rather than find their way through the hard walls. And at this point, Thomas is going to creep his way up those red stairs and look for anybody down the classical side, or at least just keep control here. Setting themselves up for more pace and they're flashing around the corner to burn the ADSs as Factor looks underneath to try and find something but as the pings come out, Ash is the one that is a bit more concerned. Gonna quick fire up an explosive and gonna 360 and maybe fire the second one. No, doesn't quite do it yet. Is waiting for the body to appear. There's the quick frag grenade but no bites unfortunately as they start to again cause so many problems for this vertical. Yeah, this is looking like a big issues for Rai so far but they're starting to fight back so far, but Acid is very, very low HP, but as you said, issues for the vertical are definitely on the board here. In fact, they're able to do quite a lot of work downstairs, but we do see England, and he's still holding down onto 90, as it would seem. Still trying to deal with all of this going through, but Factor below definitely doing the work as well to try and get him off of that position, and England is just, yeah, he's just not in a good position there at all. He's going to try and fall off a little bit here. Ryze are giving up a lot of control, but they haven't found... I mean, they still have control of the site, most importantly, and no frags have been found against them yet, and Luminosity's running out of time to start their execute. Yeah, well, Doodle is the first to go down with Diffuser as well. Thomas is going to offer the cover, and they're going to be able to get the man back up, but with 50 seconds on, they've, as you said, they've got to try and make something work with this. They've stacked a lot of bodies up on these main stairs, and without the kind of kill of their own to cover it. It's becoming a bit of a tighter scenario. Sees the smoke, but the canister goes off from range and the bullets join in as they get the first frag of the round. And the second quickly follows Vandal Smoke, finishing off an already weakened doodle. Thomas is looking for a little bit of give on this maestro. Sees the backpack and finds the rest as he drops the body, but the crossfire and the man around the corner finally shuts it down. England has returned to the land he lost very quickly and has found it in systematic and pretty brutal fashion. Hyena is looking for, again, anything and finds Adam with a quick spin, waiting for the Doctor Swing around the corner, but with Vandal, the other kind of battling back on the far side, and England finding another, it is all down to the ash of Rexon. With three people very spread out, one on the floor, but two on the floor. Fortunately, nobody there to pick up the finisher. 
Absolute great attempt coming up from Rexon there to try and bring in the 1v3. Actually, he almost did it as well. That was the crazy part. But England shuts him down. And Rise find their very first defense round. Let me also going to have to change things up a little bit. Move a little bit quicker if they want to keep themselves in the race here. Rise looking better, but not quite on the board just yet. Yeah, it was a very, very smart play. And I think that's one of the things that we kind of wanted to see from the first round was the aggressive biting back. Because previously, they kind of let luminosity fall upon them and fall against them and they suffered a brunt sure but it you know it, you've got to try and find something to like battle back and battle against them with and they were able to kind of put it together a little bit there obviously aggressively holding uh, the angles with range worked but the swinging back in of the dock across 90 and that movement that they did not have in any sense in the previous hold on that point So, moving through in the trophy statutory room defense instead. Interestingly, we see the Twitch coming out from Attackers the Minosity's lineup the this time bomb. from Doodle, which is kind of interesting because now they have no hard breacher. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll see what they kind of want to do with it. They would assume it's going to be this point. In fact, you would generally know it's going to be this point as well, based on you know how people like to come to this map and like to play with the space. And obviously what we've seen from Luminosity so far has been less of attention on walls and more of attention of let's put the bodies down, let's get in, let's cause problems for them. This point can be a little bit tighter when you're kind of limited to you know only a couple of narrow doorways rather than any kind of big angles that you can have by default as you kind of get in some of the other points and some of the other surrounds of points and i guess we'll see if they can find a way to pull it together with just soft destruction and aggression if a team can do it though with the confidence they've shown i think it's possible yeah i just i'm just interested to see how exactly they plan on doing this right now because uh, no hard reach of Villa kind of throws out quite a lot of how Villa is established, but it's going to be a heavy rush coming out already as they try and make their way into sight. Doodle does manage to find an opening frag, but it's all disaster as they push into ball and it's an absolute slaughter. Factor does find one, however, onto Acid, and not as bad as I initially thought it was as Boosie finds one of his own. Doodle, however, still injured, will be revived. But oh, an Astro Peaks comes through from England as England finds a TK again. What is going on? This man should be banned. This is not good at all. It's been moving to a 2v2 now. But Luminosity still looking good with that initial push coming on. If they can keep these franks even, they can still bring it in. Adam going for the flank as well to try and bring it in. Flashbang's going down deep into sight, making sure there's no ADS there. As Thomas goes for the pre-fire, almost finds Adam, but not just yet. Well, let's fall into a little bit of a stalemate here. A two versus two as Doodle creeps and crawls his way into the point, but they know that he is trying it. Shuts him down in England, who has been an absolute roll this round so far, even including the team killers, but a lot of bodies on the floor. They're trying to find the side he peeks on, and he goes a bit wide, but they can't quite do it. And with the pressure coming on the other side, he is in a very, very tough, tight spot. He's going to try and rotate out, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite come together. Had to move because of the C4 and the aggression. Great, great shutdown there from uh, primarily England, but Rise in general. And England of his own teammates as well. So really yeah. uh, good frags from England all around coming through. Luminosity still find themselves on match point here, but now Rise have to go to an offsite. And this is going to be series defining right now because this should be an easy take for Luminosity. I mean, this was the this was the closest round, right? And it was the round that Rise eventually did find. So going into the standing room kitchen defense, I'm not confident that Rise is going to be able to bring it in. But we'll have a look so far how it's going to go down. Luminosity definitely been dominating this matchup so far, but this has been a much closer rounds than uh, than Disrupt had. Yeah, and they're happy to be you know a bit aggressive with it. They're and I mean a bit aggressive. They're trying rushes. They're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, and I guess it's down to Rise to try and band together and find a way to shut that down. Obviously. In Luminosity's head, as you said, this is definitely the point where they go, well, this is where we can put this to bed. This is where we can kind of, we're taking them to the upper point. We're taking them to Kitchen. We're taking them to a point that they they pulled up an attack, sure, but it is the point there. If you're going to lose, it's this one. And I guess we'll see if Rise can find some way of shutting it down, because as we said, without some Herculean efforts from the previous couple of rounds, well, things might have kind of gone the opposite way. 
So, we'll have a look how things are going to continue to go down for Rise. This is going to be a very, very big uphill battle. I do like the inclusion of the Mute and the Mozzie. We've seen pretty decent droning coming out across the board from Luminosity already. And it's primarily what they've been kind of relying on to make their entry with kind of having like two entries at the same time coming from opposite places, both getting droned in themselves. That is being Luminosity's big entry point, and taking drones off the board is going to be a big upset for that kind of strategy. Well, this is the slowest and steadiest we've seen Luminosity on an approach, so they definitely want to try and take this this time around. They're not quite careening and screaming through the map as of yet. They're droning themselves ahead. They're getting some idea of where Rise are, and they're just going to pull their playback just a little bit until they can start to find bodies uh, getting all of this southern side under their kind of watchful eye now as fact is going to start rolling across we can see the hard reinforcements going up on the far side there's a body playing towards the mud room uh, beneath there's obviously also one on the far side as well and if they get vertical well at that point it's a very tough position so this is where the fight is going to come down just going out in heavy amounts from luminosity as we'll see them slowly make their sure pros Valkyrie cams will take get taken off the board from Red Stairs. LG have secured quite a lot of control over this top floor, and of course they do have the book on the board. Well, that's all of the top floor. They've completely left that into the hands of the attackers at this point, and now it's just Bucks to free reign his way across, and I'm waiting to see if they hit any of them with either the Pulse and a C4 or the Valkyrie and double down there, and, you know, they need to have a bit of a response. If you're handing over all this vertical control, Show me why. Show me why you're giving this away. Well, there are four C4s up on the board from yeah. Rise. That's probably I a big reason. I want to see it. those hit, though, because the amount There's... of times they get bought and do nothing, yeah. so consistent. One C4 has already gone out, and unfortunately it did miss. And we do see the pantry wall getting opened up right in the lead. Doodle size, beastly. Oh my god, almost gets taken off the board there, but no. It's going to be tucking himself into the side of Pantry here and seeing what he can do from this side as Doodle opens up the laundry wall effectively. Rex is still above, however. Flashbangs are going to go down, making sure that no one can trick that out. And this is a good angle from Rex as well. Well, the drone of Mozzie gets an idea on where the Nomad is, but they're going for the rotate anyway as they set themselves up. And the Pulse is consistently looking for this and might go for a bit of a wide swing aggression, but it's a bit of a bold call because you already know they've got a blinkered firing line and they're aiming down that anyway. Hyena opens up the frags and takes care of Acid. You can see Luminosity is starting their collapse here. Doodle finds a second on Adam. The bodies are starting to fall with Beastly on only a fraction of health and Doodle trying to get the diffuser down. Well, things are starting to slip through the fingers. Vandal finds one to bring it back to a two versus four, but we're in a post plant in this situation as England tries to creep a bit closer, but there is no dice as he is locked out before he gets anywhere in to the room. Vandal has everything to do, but unfortunately none of the blood left to do it. Luminosity find themselves on a 7-3 on the second map, but both fall into their favor, and they are the first team on this lower bracket to progress to the semi-finals. Absolutely beautifully performed coming out from Luminosity there. They completely dominated through that matchup, and Villa was, was their map to win. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was one of those maps where we looked at it when it was bought on the side of Rise, and you go, why well, are you bringing it? And they yeah. had some good ideas, sure. Luminosity. They are so electric on that map. That is two games done for our play day today, but don't go anywhere yet. We still have one more to go down, and that is the new introductory team to Pro League Obey versus an old familiar hand in Evil Geniuses. We will see you just after the ad break.
Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.